That's no, okay. I'm recording video with Sam. So. Like wearing too many layers of clothing because I have a sweater that I have down there. That's all I put on. Yeah. I'll have people wearing like coats and hats and stuff. And right. I'm okay without that, but. Right. Well, some people might be more acclimated too. Like, yeah. especially if it's 100 degrees outside, they'll yeah. be used to the really hot. Oops. Oh, my gimbal's being stupid. Hang on. I had a, something locked. I shouldn't have it locked. <laughs> Hold still, real quick. Dang it. There we go. There we go. I have a smaller gimbal for my GoPro. This is pretty nice, but this bigger one is really picky. It, um,. It, it because it's so adjustable there's a lot of things that adjust that shouldn't be adjusted and it basically falls apart <laughs> so where are you from salem oregon um actually funny story i'm on my way to wyoming to shoot a steam train video the largest steam engine in the world that still runs it's going to be going on a joy ride to california and back i'm going to be chasing it the whole way so there's three or four weeks down the tube <laughs> but yeah as long as i'm heading to wyoming i thought i'd do some sightseeing Please don't lean on the sketchy wooden railing. Most caves don't even have a railing. All right, so right here is our first lava tube, like collapse section. All of our collapse sections are part of a lava tube. All of our lava tubes are roughly 3.5 miles long, and they do connect to our base of our volcano, which we can actually see from where we're standing. So if you look out in front of me, you're going to see a hill. If you look off to the right, you're going to see another hill that's flat on top and kind of rocky with no vegetation. That's going to be our volcano. Our volcano erupted roughly uh, 12,000 years ago. This is a shield type of volcano, which is just the way it exploded. Instead of like exploding, it just kind of oozed out. Due to the lava flow, it created two types of lava rock. One is called Pohoyhoy. Pohoyhoy is very dense and smooth. We'll be walking on a lot of that today. The second type that it created is called Aa. Aa is a lot more rough, not as dense, and kind of breaks off differently. Mm -hmm. Both of these names are both originated from Hawaii. How old is this cave? Um, I don't know. So. Um, it's going to be over 12,000 years because obviously it was here before the volcano erupted mm -hmm. and the er uh, eruption happened roughly 12,000 years ago. Okay, interesting. So this green stuff growing on the rock, this is lichen, right? Yes. Yeah, so what about the orange or amber stuff, same stuff? Uh, that's iron dioxide. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was actually going to talk about that. But okay. I'm surprised you guys aren't busy or summer vacation. It was a weekday, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's morning time as well. So. People like to sleep in on their day off. Yeah. I camped out last night. I couldn't sleep in. Once it was dawn, I started waking up. Oh, yeah, that happens to me a lot when we go camping. I wake up really, really warm. And like... Well, it really sucks. I was kept up all night by the coyotes howling. When it was dawn, the coyotes finally shut up. <laughs> it's like, now I got peace and quiet, but it's too bright to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I saved a little money last night by camping out last night, but it kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right here we have two life-size replicas of our natives. They did not grow to be very big or very old. They only lived to be 18 to 22 years old, the reason for that. So if you go ahead and look in front of the girl, you're going to see what we call a pestle and mortar. Now they would actually use this to grind up their food. This is made out of lava rock, so as they were grinding up their food, bits and pieces of that lava rock would end up getting into their food, which meant they were consuming that lava rock going into their digestive system. Wasn't really good for their digestive system, causing them to get sick and die again. What's the name of that disease that they got from eating the rocks? Like, I know asbestos is basically a rock, too, yeah. and inhaling it basically gives you cancer. So. Huh. Okay. There we go. My gimbal's touch screen, so I keep accidentally touching it.
Maybe you lost reception. Hmm. Mm. Well, the thing is, if they come running after you, they might trip and stuff. You don't really want to encourage them to run when it's too late. When it's 06, we usually don't let people go until 07. But if it's 07, we don't allow laters, like, let people to show. So they're like one way, but you know them further because I only have one person. How many watts is the lighting system for this cave? I do not know. I, oh. don't, I don't even know how to count watts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we do have like quite a bit of lights in here. Alright, they're all LED though, right? Uh, yeah, so we've got a string of like lights coming kind of by the stairs in the first entrance, and we have kind of like light posts. But yeah, they're all LED. Alright, so right here is a collapse section. Mm. It was a full lava tube and just kind of collapsed right here. As you already pointed out, you did see that lime green lichen earlier. Then that red is going to be iron dioxide. Your white's going to be your water rust. It's just basically, these rocks actually used to be black. Over time, mm -hmm. water kind of washes that black off. They turn green and you get your lichen, your iron dioxide, and your water rust. Mm -hmm. Have you had anybody get hurt in here, like tripping or something? I've never had anybody trip in here, but back on the trail, I've had people trip because they walk too close to the edge. Oh. Those rocks are lining the trail, and they'll trip on the rocks. Oh yeah. Just like the rumble strips on a highway. <laughs> yeah. Like if you can't walk in the middle of the trail, stand behind someone. Yeah. Well, people usually keep to the right to except to pass kind okay. of stuff. All right, so right here, um, we're at the entrance of our cave. But mm -hmm. before we head in, I'm just going to explain a little bit of the history of the cave. Mm -hmm. So in the early 1800s, a 12-year-old boy was looking for his family's lost sheep. He found them drinking out of a water hole. This water hole was roughly two feet by two feet then. When he looked in, he saw a whole bunch of ice. The cave was completely full of ice back then. Mm -hmm. He went home and told his family and friends, this, and it became popular. So the state ended up finding out about it, and they decided to start harvesting the ice out of the cave. So right. they did have to make that two foot by two foot opening a little bigger to get that ice out of the cave. Eventually, they decided to start shipping the ice clear from Shoshone to Oregon. Unfortunately, though, they were taking the ice out of the cave so fast that the cave's natural cooling system couldn't keep up with how fast they were taking the ice out of the cave. So they decided to blow a hole in the back wall to find more cave and more ice, but they were actually very unsuccessful and blew a hole in the roof of the cave, mm. causing the cave to ruin its natural cooling system. In doing so, everyone forgot about how special this was. Luckily, though, around 1840, a young gentleman named Russell Robinson came along. It took him roughly two years, but he, I mean ten years, he got a lease from the state, mm. and worked with the airflow, patched up those holes, and got the cave to start producing ice again. This wall and door is part of his patch-up job, and when we get to the back of the cave, I'll show you his other patch-up job as well. Is this cave a dead end, or is there another entrance? The, uh, so right here we go in, and then there's a dead end. Okay. Um, since he was so successful, the cave is now able to stay between 20 and 30 degrees. Just so you know, there is a constant dripping, um, so the ice stays that are about to enter in the cave are going to be wet, which means they will also freeze, so you just make sure you okay. Yeah. My well, shoes don't have the best traction, but I'll be careful. Okay. They're comfortable. <laughs> 
Yeah, yesterday I climbed down into Tea Kettle Cave and that was kind of sketchy. Yeah. I don't know if you've done that one, but I it's pretty this steep. This is basically the only cave I've done when I was little, so I live in Richfield. Um, and when I was little there were like caves around here oh, wow. so that I would go into, but that was when I was little, so I haven't really been into very many caves. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention because I had to look at the people behind me and I like slipped down a couple of stairs. Okay, just a second. So my light's at 6%. I'm going to turn it up to 100% so you can see how bright it is. And if it's okay with you, I'll leave it up that bright. Yeah, if it's too I bright just, for you, let me know. I just have you turn it off in the back of the cave because I turn the lights off in the back Oh, okay. Of the what if I'm afraid of the dark? It's kidding. Okay, let me... Uh... Okay, there. Ooh. So, it's a nice red rock above you here. Yeah. It was kind of silly. In Oregon caves, there's a tour like this. Uh -huh. They don't allow you to bring your own flashlight at all. Yeah. I'm like, well, long story short, they want to make sure people stay with the group. They don't want people wandering away, stuff like uh -huh. that. It's a, it's a solution cave, so it's a lot prettier than this. So. Yeah. A lot of people are tempted by the dark side. <laughs> Bare bones. Surprised they didn't name it Bare Bones Cave then or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right here we do have some bare bones. So before the cave was actually ever discovered, a mama bear came in here to hibernate for the winter time. Unfortunately though, while she was in here, the cave created an ice wall causing and then when she woke up, she wasn't able to get out, which caused, star caused oh. starvation. Her body did end up decaying eventually, and now all that's left oh. are her bones. Bears can dig pretty well. I'm surprised she didn't try digging through the ice, but maybe she didn't know how or something. Yeah. Or maybe it was just too much. I mean, she was in here throughout the whole winter. Right, yeah, I'm wondering. In the, if you wake up from hibernation, they may be pretty weak, too, yeah. or confused. Are these metal things on the ceiling like fasteners from old lighting systems or something? Yeah. See, there's like three of them there. I know they've like moved the cables and redone the cables. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got a cool walkway right here. Oh, nice pennies. Are you going to clean those up? Are you going to leave those there forever? <laughs> yeah. Like kerosene lanterns and carbide lanterns and yeah. all that good stuff. Causing it to melt, uh, melt and refreeze right here, causing the rain. A lot of people saw this rain as a wishing well, and that's why there's coins and things like that in here. Now you can hear that dripping of the water. That's actually yeah. how we get our ice in a cave. So from rainfall and snow melt, those two things will seep into the cave. We also have what we call our Lost River, which is two reservoirs. Once they fill up, they kind of come together into our Lost River, which also connects to the cave. Now that water you're going to see coming in today is going to be more from our Lost River than anything else. How far are we underground right now? Um, I'm, I'm guessing like 40 feet. Okay. When we get to the back, we're 80 feet underground. Now you said the Lost River. Is that a river we can actually see or is that hidden back in the cracks somewhere? Or? Yeah, we can actually see that river. It just kind of goes into the ground. Okay, yeah. So right here the ice is 3 to 5 feet thick. When we get to the very back of the cave, it's 10 to 12 feet thick. Also, that water coming into the cave does take a little while to freeze, so you're going to have a couple of different layers. First, you're going to have kind of like a water layer, then you're going to have a flaky layer of ice, then you'll have your completely uh, full frozen layer of ice. Alright. Now, normally, of course, ice will float on top of liquid water, but here the water is on top of the ice. Yeah. I take it that's because the ice is stuck, right? Are there any bats in here today? No. Okay. Oh, nice formations. <laughs> All right, so right here we have st some stalagmites. What happens is when there is lava in the cave, that lava slowly drifts on top of each other, creating a mound. 
they are hollow. The bigger one is 10 to 15 pounds, our smaller one is 5 to 7 pounds. Now, they weren't created in this spot. They have been moved just to be put on display, but they are natural. Hmm. From this cave, right? Yes. Cool. When is the last um, got tour of the season? Like what month, day? I believe it's in August, so I can't okay. exactly tell you because it says my first year working here. Okay. So I'm not really sure when they close, but I believe it's either like late August or early September that I've heard from other guys. It just kind of depends right. on the weather outside. Yeah, that would when it would have the least ice and the most liquid water though, right? Yeah, most okay. likely because that's... Um, well, honestly, when we have our most water on top of the ice, is more like going to be towards the end of the season. Because okay. that's when it starts to rain and we get our okay. snow, but it, it's warmer and stuff. So right. It melts, and at the beginning of the season, once that uh, water, not like the very beginning of the season, but closer to the beginning of the season, uh -huh. when that water's melting and coming into the cave as well. Right. So right here we have a collapse section. In 1930, there was an earthquake. This is actually the only earthquake that ever affected the cave, but it did cause it to collapse right here. Oh, wow. What's really cool is the ice on the rocks is constantly looking different because instead of coming on a flat surface, it goes on the rocks, which aren't a uh, flat surface. So the ice on the rocks always looks different as we're getting more ice on them. So you said before the earthquake, this breakdown pile wasn't here at all, right? Yes. Do you have any pictures of that, like the cave before it happened? So or I know, I not? believe in the museum there's pictures of people... I think there, I've never really looked in the museum, okay. but I know there's like at least words or pictures of people ice skating. So they used to right. have like ice skate, uh, people like professionally would come down here and ice skate. <laughs> but once they had the collapsion, they quit doing that because there wasn't enough. There room. wasn't any room, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't want to trip and land on a rock. <laughs> yeah. So right here we have a indent in the cave wall. So this is actually a beginning of a lava tube. What happened when there was a bunch of gas and lava in here, it needed somewhere to go. So it was actually going to escape out of this and create another lava tube. And I actually can't really see it with your light on. Um, you want me to turn it off real quick? Or just like shine it down. So when you turn it down, you can see that there's a kind of like a darker spot on the top. Okay. That is kind of like a crevice or a crack where just enough gas was able to leave the cave where it didn't need to create more room. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And if you want, you can have your light on for a little bit back there to move around, but then I'll ask you to shut it off and you can try it out. Okay. Well. Oh, I remember this. Like I said, it's been two years since I've been here, so. <laughs> okay. Oops. All right, so back here we are about 80 feet underground. Wow. If you go ahead and look up to the top right, you're going to see that darker patch in the back of the cave. This is where Russell Robinson patched up the cave. He used tar paper, chicken wire, straw, and wood. He used these things because they kind of resemble the force of the rocks. They kept in as much cold air as the rocks did and held out as much warm air as the rocks did as well. Okay. So let me uh, turn off my light here.